we're ready. All right, let's get started. Welcome back, everyone. Day two. Um, sorry, I'm a little under the weather, so not my usual dynamic set. Uh, before we get started, we still have uh, free cloud credentials. If you go to developer.juju.solutions, you'll get some AWS credentials. So if you don't have the resources to try your own cloud stuff, um, just sign up for this, and then we'll give you credentials. The instances auto reap, and we do all that good stuff. So feel free to just try Juju OpenStack. Well, not OpenStack. Um, but Juju, Kubernetes, anything that we talk about here, feel free to try that with this account. Um, so today we're starting off with the operator track, and Pete is going to do distributed systems CI. Yay. Cool. So uh, yeah, my talk is on distributed systems CI. Um, there's going to be a lot of Juju specific stuff, but I think whether you use Juju or not, um, some of the ways we are thinking about approaching these problems are going to be useful. Um, and if you're considering using Juju, um, this might be a compelling reason to give it a try uh, because it makes some of these things easier. Um, so CI, continuous integration, uh, you know, build fast release, the CI cycles. Um, people like them. They can be a little bit tricky to set up sometimes. And we'll go over that. So, um, yeah, I'm Pete Vanderbees, and I'm on the big software team um, at Canonical. Um, uh, we basically write and provide support for uh, big data charms. Um, but this thing that I'm talking about right now is actually a, intended to be a general CI system for charms um, and could even be expended to, uh, again, in principle, be a CI system for anything managed by config management software. So uh, CI at its core is testing. And testing, it's good. Um, it's, it's good like, like I tell my kid broccoli is good or Brussels sprouts are good. Um, and uh, it can be tempting. Well, OK, so, so what testing does is it allows you to iterate quickly with confidence that you are not breaking your stuff. So you spend less time worrying <laughs> um, and more time just you know test run in the background. You check in on them. You say, OK, yeah, my stuff is still doing what I expect. But testing is difficult, especially if you are dealing with a system that justifies having config management software applied to it. Um, because you might be talking about something that needs 10 microservices to talk to each other. And maybe the microservices don't all play nicely when they're all on the same server. Um, so it can be tempting to say, OK, you know what? I'm just going to deploy my stuff somewhere. I'm going to say that the people who wrote the software tested it. And I'm going to do pgrep my thing, and yay, the process is running, or curl to a port, and yay, the port's responsive, so I trust that it's there. Um, and uh, I would, I hope by the end of this presentation, you feel that that is not good enough, <laughs> um, and you feel that it is not impossible to get better. Um, so, uh, one advantage we have is um, in these, in Juju and in um, configuration management systems in general. Is everything's a scripting language, just Ruby or Python or whatever. There are tools, you import unit test in Python, talks to run your tests, nose tests to sniff them out, whatever. Um, but everything is I.O. Like you, your Python script triggers other scripts to run and they go out to the system and do something and you wanna write a unit test and you say, okay, well I know this Python script will put this um, command line command together and expects to get this back and I can validate that my function will put that command line together and if it gets this back, it'll work. Um, and then your tests are really, your code has assumptions and your tests have the same assumptions, so you're not really validating your tests. Um, on top of that, everything's distributed, so every, you are reaching out to other servers. Um, you might want to mock out you know, calls to this service and that service, and again, your tests aren't going to do anything to check your assumptions. So if your assumptions are wrong, you're not going to be able to test them. So we have some ways um, to deal with this that are currently out. Um, there's a Python library called libjuju, and uh, it can be an integration testing framework for Juju. It's a lot of other things, but you can write integration tests. So forget about writing the units, just uh, libjuju will, uh, has hooks to deploy your stuff somewhere um, and run commands on it, you know, wait for your stuff to be deployed and stuff. Um, so it has handlers for the IO. Um, we also have some tooling built up around it. Um, they're actually, the tooling stack is a little bit complex, but the, the main thing to know about is a thing called Cloud Weather Report, um, which will basically run tools to auto-discover tests and run those tests against various clouds. So you can say, okay, I want to run these tests against AWS, I want to run these tests against GCE, and Cloud Weather Report will compile those um, examples and yeah, you have something. Um, 
The downside is you have to manually write all the commands to deploy your stuff, and you're kind of uh, you're doing a lot of replication of your operations process in your tests, um, and uh, it, it's it's time consuming. Um, on top of that, <laughs> everybody writes this test. So uh, this is written in libgju. It's asynchronous software, so the flow is a little bit out of order. Um, but basically, you create a model. Um, you connect to it. It's, it's a Juju model. Um, and you add this observer class. Um, and then you deploy something. Um, so that's Juju-specific stuff. <coughs> it, this is basically going to put a conclusive machine somewhere. Um, and then on the top there, your observer class, uh, on unit add, it'll run this check unit. And the check unit, oh, look, it runs pgraph. <laughs> and Java's running, and your empty remain is in the results from Java, so this would happen to test Zookeeper. Um, it, it's based on a real Zookeeper test. Um, it's kind of disappointing because this is the same as a human sitting down and making sure the service is running, right? But you've actually put some effort into here. It's, it's like you've learned libjuju, you've got the test written, it's hard to convince yourself to keep on going from there. Because you know, you're, you're checking that the thing deploys. So we have a new tool that we're working on called Matrix. It is to the point where you can definitely go and check it out and do stuff with it. Um, it is not fully mature yet. We're in a version 1.0 release, and we welcome feedback, um, criticism, uh, commits, all that stuff. Um, basically, Matrix says, you know what? Don't write your test in a test framework like libgju, as wonderful as it is. Like it, it's a great tool for writing other stuff. But um, we're going to give you a way to uh, basically declaratively write tests in YAML files. Um, so, and on top of that, your pgrep and curl getting to a port, um, those are baked in. Th th those are just taken care of. Um, you don't have to think about that. Um, and if you need some more logic in your tests, um, it's pluggable, so you can write plugins in Python. Um, so you uh, basically, actually by default, if you run matrix on a bundle, I'll, I'll show you in a minute, it'll. Uh, It'll just deploy that bundle and verify that it deploys, and then you can write additional tests after that. Um, on top of that, it does this thing called Glitch. So Glitch is modeled after Netflix's Chaos Monkey. Um, it creates mischief. It tears down machines. It adds additional machines. Uh, it reboots machines many times in succession to see if it can make services fail. It'll even go and like kill your Juju process, um, or you could write plugins to kill other processes. Um, technically, you could run it against your production cluster. Um, maybe it, when it's more mature, that's what chaos monkeys <laughs> intended to do. And if you say you have an HA cluster, it, it should survive it. Um, but uh, what Glitch allows you to do is uh, while you're running a deploy test, and actually while you're running other tests, we'll get to that in the future, um, you can kind of surface problems that might not show up until you're fully scaled out in front of customers. Like this happens one in a million times. I don't see it in my testing. I go to production and oh no, uh, you know, I have a million customers. Well, hopefully you have a problem having a million or more customers, and 100 of them are very mad at me because of this edge case. Um, Glitch can help you catch those edge cases. Um, so that's part of what it's intended to do. Um, so actually, let's take a look at Matrix. Um, so I'm going to go into a bundle here. Um, I have just the number of bundles, and it'll be the Wiki Simple bundle. Um, I got this by running charm pull, uh, wiki simple, by the way. It's just a quick command line command to get a bundle. I'm going to run matrix. <coughs> so um, again, I haven't written any tests specific to this. I've just said this is my bundle, my juju bundle, um, which is basically, uh, well, it's a lot more than like a collection of shaft or puppet scripts. But th this, is my, this is my config management thing here. Um, matrix will you kind of test it out. Um, and Matrix by default will run a deployment test and a traffic test. Um, and it'll give you this nice little readout here. Um, each test is made of components, which are uh, tasks, which are over on the right there. Um, you see there's a green checkbox next to deploy. It's, it's successfully done the deploy task. It's now going to wait until the um, cluster is healthy. And we're not going to sit through this whole thing. Um, here you have your Juju model. So just really quickly, it, does it, has anybody not used Juju before at all? OK, so I'm, I'm not going to go to <laughs> that. That's great. So um, you know that the Juju model is uh, matrix warm alien. Uh, it, it comes up with a, a, what is the library? I think we're using the 
XKCD pass library for that. It, and, and anyway, it, it'll come up with a unique name for your bundle that's a little bit human friendly. Um, and uh, it'll create that as a, or a unique name for your model. Um, it'll create that model and go and do its work there. So we'll get to why that's cool in a little bit. Like this deals with some of the, can you give me a staging server <laughs> or a test server and can you keep it up to date? Um, Matrix has just created a nice little environment for you. Um, this is running against AWS. So this is the wiki simple bundle. It, it, it does, it has two machines on it, it's really simple. But um, this will work just as well if you had that complex case where you have 10, 20, 100 microservices that all need to connect to each other. Matrix is just doing that. Um, and we've got our Juju debug log output. Um, on, uh, I, I've got the font size bumped up. Hopefully everybody can see it okay. It's a little bit nicer when you have a smaller font. It's actually on your computer. Um, so yeah. So once Matrix is done, or once I hit Q to quit, um, it'll actually clean up that model created. Um, if I do Juju list models, it should show up as being destroyed. Uh, Matrix War Alien is in the destroying state, so if we checked up on that in a minute, um, it would be gone. So Matrix has gone in, it's created a nice little testing or staging environment for you, um, and then it's cleaned up after itself when it's done. So that's Matrix. And that's kind of the, the current state of integration tests. But this is about build, test, release, continuous integration. We haven't talked about GitHub and all that stuff. Um, so. When I've worked on teams that are working on complex software, lots of microservices, lots of servers, all over the place, you're testing, <laughs> it gets complicated. Well, first of all, so you have to um, connect it to a revision control system. Um, we're gonna talk about Jenkins in a minute, so everybody knows that's a solve problem. Um, you wanna test on releases to that system, okay? Um, you want like test servers and staging servers. Um, what I have seen happen, so, so say your, your startup or your team uh, has HDFS deployed to production, and they're very happy with it. And then you tell your ops people, well, you know what, we need that, but we need another copy of it for staging, and we need another copy of it for testing, and I want those two copies to look exactly like I'm in production so that I can actually catch problems. Maybe there are slightly fewer peers, whatever. Um, and what happens <laughs> is the ops people say, okay, we'll make this for you. Um, and then people get busy, and two months later, the testing infrastructure is just out of date. Um, and so you can test lots of things, but production happens to have gotten security updates and stuff, and your testing sort of, uh, infrastructure doesn't have it yet. Um, so th this just, this stuff become, begins to be a headache as you're working um, and uh, dealing with the system. Um, you tend to have conflicts about who gets to use the test servers when. Uh, we had uh, at a very large uh, blue colored company a spreadsheet actually, <laughs> just an Excel spreadsheet <laughs> where you'd schedule your time on the test server. Um, and all of this, like, it's just the difficulty is raised to the power of what, however big your distributed system is. Like, the, the more, the bigger and more complex the system is, the bigger and more complex the task to keep track of everything is. But we are config management people. We already have all these problems solved as far as, like, giving the infrastructure, right? And we're Juju people. We have, we can um, leverage all of the operations knowledge that has been encapsulated in a charm to just solve these problems. So. This is our CWR CI bundle. Um, CWR, I mentioned before, it's cloud weather report, and we put it in a charm, and Jenkins, yay. <laughs> um, familiar, which, uh, I, I mean, some people, if you don't like Jenkins, you may say boo, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a proven and familiar um, system for managing these sorts of problems. Um, so, uh, you can deploy this bundle. Um, it'll set up a Jenkins server with you with a nice friendly dashboard. Um, and it will hook Cloud Weather Report into it, which means that you can then hand it a Juju Charm, and Cloud Weather Report says, I know how to run tests on Juju Charms or bundles. And Jenkins says, I know just how to wrangle running tests and grabbing stuff from GitHub and stuff. And um, those two charms work together very nicely in this bundle. Um, so instead of reaching out to your ops people and saying, please give me a testing environment, please update it, you, you know, do Juju deploy CWRCI. Um, now, Okay, just full honesty, this is an uh, uh, excerpt from my Git history, or my bash history, um, when I went and set up the thing that I'm about to show you. There are a few more commands. You have to set a Jenkins password, and set up a user that can talk to your Juju controller, and expose CWRCI. I, I just command a fix to that, so you don't have to do that anymore, but the charm store wasn't updated. And then you have to register um, your GitHub repo with this. Um, this is a good candidate for um, smoothing out with ConjureUp. 
Um, if anybody wants to write a Conjure Up script for us, that would be a great community contribution, but we will do it ourselves. Um, it's, it, it's on our list of yes, we need a Conjure Up script so we don't have to mess around with that. Um, but it's still, there's a friendly readme that will walk you through this, and this isn't too bad. It's just saying uh, users and passwords. Okay. And uh, that set of bash commands actually gave me something nice. So I'm going to do juju status. And here, I have it deployed. There's uh, Jenkins and CWR. Um, and let's see, I can do Google Chrome, this IP address, and port 8080. Uh, Jenkins would prompt me for a password. I, I already logged in. Probably should have logged out, but you, you set the password on the command line. And uh, here's a Jenkins dashboard. It should look somewhat familiar. Um, and Here's this job I've set up for the Open JDK charm, um, and actually let, let's uh, let's kind of trigger this. Um, so let me close these up. Okay. Um, so for demo purposes, I've taken um, Kevin Monroe's Open JDK layer um, and cloned it to my own GitHub because I'm going to make um, extraneous commits to it, and I've set up a webhook um, in GitHub and. Uh, Basically, the, the charm will give you uh, um, the URL to put in this webhook as part of its output when it gets set up. Um, but basically, that's the uh, IP address of the AWS instances I have, um, and it's a trigger charm open JDK and a hash. Um, you don't need a secret. If people feel uncomfortable with this not being locked down with a secret, that's another contribution we welcome or something else on our roadmap. Um, and what that webhook does is whenever I make a commit to this, it will talk to Jenkins about it. So I'm going to go into code charms. Whoop. Let's see if I can type here. And let's uh, let's edit the readme. Um, oh, whoop. help if I actually open the file. Okay. And at the top here, we can say hooray config management camp. Okay. And then we can do git add and Git commit um, config camp test and git push origin master. I know if people have seen the alias YOLO, it's a git add dot git commit dash m deal with a git push master force. <laughs> but <laughs> it's kind of along the same lines there. Okay, so we, we push something to GitHub. Um, that, uh, that says, yay, config management camp um, in the readme. So this shouldn't break our charm, um, but it should trigger a run here. Uh, so if I go back into my Jenkins, yeah. Um, you can see I've got charm open JDK is building, and I should be able to get some console output, and there it goes. It's running a bunch of scripts. It's uh, basically, it triggers cloud weather report to run, cloud weather report will run bundle tester, which discovers tests. It's, uh, it's a lot of stuff that's uh, in the Juju docu um, docs right now, but you don't really have to worry about it if you have this set up. You don't have to worry about the internals of the scripts. Um, it'll also run matrix um, automatically. And uh, if we look at one of these past runs, it gives us a lot of useful output. So uh, last successful artifacts, um, we've got this matrix log. It looks like a matrix log. Um, it was deploying stuff. If, if we had let matrix run, we would have seen the health check settle. Uh, it would have said, yeah, I'm healthy, I succeeded. It would destroy the model, and then create another model and try to run the end-to-end -end test, which uh, I will talk about in a bit. Um, and if there was a problem, um, the Juju Crash Dump plugin, uh, which we've just graduated into fully useful and other library status, will run, and it'll actually give you a snapshot of all the uh, relevant logs um, on all the machines and, and give you a lot of good troubleshooting information. Uh, but this wasn't the test failure, so you don't see that. But it'd be a tarball. Um, so, so yeah, that's it's Jenkins. It's uh, I mean, this is a testing talk. It's broccoli. It's not <laughs> that exciting, but um, but but it is exciting because um, I have I this is my staging infrastructure and my testing infrastructure. It's being automatically created for me. I'm getting relevant and deep output from it, um, especially when there's a failure. Um, you see that. Well, there have been no failures today, but the test result trend there will give you a nice uh, red graph when there's uh, bad stuff happening. And right now it's blue because I haven't done anything to hurt this charm. Um, 
So that's cool. That's you, you've deployed this charm. You have a continuous integration um, infrastructure. Um, it's working, and so you can yell at people for breaking the build and do all sorts of fun stuff. You could, you know, you could hook this up in a, what do people do that they have little Nerf cannons that can nerf, uh, hit a developer's desk when they broke the build. Um, that that <laughs> there's a Jenkins plugin for that. Um, cool. Let me get back to the talk. Okay. So. That was kind of a, a whirlwind tour through this stuff. Um, this is kind of our, what we think, this is our suggested workflow for using this. Um, so somebody commits code, um, you tell your CI system to pull the code, build the charm, run tests, and oh, the other piece I missed, um, this thing can actually push a charm to the charm store. Can you do, do, do publish charm channel edge? I'm not sure if the invocation is 100% correct. It, just add that for the um, talk, and I realized I didn't check it. Um, but but anyway, you can you can stick the charm in the charm store, not not publicly available, embedded in the review queue, but shareable automatically with this. So you can say to your developers, if you commit your code, then you can do um, juju deploy cs colon some username slash some charm, and that charm will be deployable and. Um, you can also set up a job um, so that when code gets tagged for release and get, um, it will, the CI system will pull your code, build the charm, and push it to the beta channel. The, those are both configurable, so if you don't like edge and beta, you want to push to different channels or not push at all, you can configure that. Um, but basically, you can say to your team, okay, just make a release tag um, in get, and then all of the stuff will magically propagate to the store as a beta. Um, and that's kind of from a charm point of view. You can also set up your bundles in this thing. So um, uh, Jenkins, well, Cloud Weather Report um, will watch the bundle. If any charms in it change, it'll run tests on the bundle and then say uh, push it to as a candidate, the, the whole bundle as a candidate to the store. Um, and then the next step uh, would be, say, to submit it to the review queue. Um, that's still a human step, um, though we have some future plans to make the review queue submission automatic. Speaking of future plans. <laughs> um, like I mentioned, tighter integration with review queue, re review queue charm. Um, if anybody is not familiar with the review queue, um, jujucharms.com has, if you have an account um, with that site, your charms are available under your account name. If you've submitted your charm to us for review, you can make your charm into a recommended charm, which means that if somebody searches the store for, uh, say, say, CWRCI, um, it'll show up in the search results. Um, and it will say, yes, this, th we think that this is the recommended way of um, doing this, of deploying this thing, of uh, managing it. Um, so, uh, and that goes through, you, you submit it to a review queue. Um, and we're, we're working on making that just automatic. Um, and also, um, as Merlin pointed out, you might want to uh, migrate this stuff to another cloud. You might decide, eh, I want to run on GCE because I've got the SSDs by default or whatever. Um, so we're working on uh, ways of backing up your workspace and restoring it. Um, and that's an art to do. Um, as far as matrix goes, on those nice free operational tests, um, we uh, actually have this mainly checked out and in review right now um, uh, for auto discovery of EDE tests with Glitch. Um, so what happens is you have this software and you, and you say, I'm going to write a test that generates a lot of traffic on this software. I want to verify that it behaves well. And Matrix says, OK, call it EDE, or whatever the convention is. Um, and I'll just discover that and run it. Put it in the test directory, and I'll run it. And we'll run Glitch against it. So um, if you have a high availability charm, you can say, yes, I am high availability under load. And Glitch will tell you whether that is true or not. Um, we're also working on more baked-in act actions for Matrix, um, upgrade, scaling, scaling up, scaling down, et cetera. Um, Glitch will do some of that, but you can do that in a more organized fashion. And uh, we would love contributions from you, and I will. There will be URL to metrics at the end of this talk. Um, so uh, anything from contributing plugins to make it do more things to uh, feedback on whether the YAML files are easy to write, etc. Let's see. So all of this stuff is.
free and open sourcing available now. Uh, if you go to jujucharms.com and search for CWRCI, or type slash Q, query slash CWRCI, um, you can download uh, current snapshots of the bundle and try it out. Um, again, there's a friendly readme that will walk you through some of the quirks, and uh, we uh, have plans for Conjure Up. Um, and uh, if you want to try out Matrix, uh, it's github.com slash, a lot of our stuff is under juju-solutions slash matrix. And that is also free and open source, and I would love more people to contribute to it. Um, it is kind of an exciting piece of software because it's written in Python 3 and uses the async IO library. Um, and that's a very fun way of getting into asynchronous programming. I, I guess you, you, can, uh, you can do reactive charms too. <laughs> that, that, that's maybe an, an easier way, but, uh, but if you want to play with async IO, uh, Matrix is a, a great library with some um, nice examples. Um, and if you get into Matrix and say, well, this is too tough, I can't parse this, please let me know. Um, goals is to add a little bit more documentation and comments throughout it. So I'd like to know where to add those. Um, as far as letting us know about things, we hang out on Freenode, ask Juju, um, juju at list.ubuntu.com. If you want to get in touch with me directly, my username is generally PeteVG. Like Twitter PeteVG, Launchpad PeteVG, PeteVG at canonical.com, I'm PeteVG on IRC. So please feel free to message me. Um, I'm generally awake during reasonable hours on East Coast US time, but I'm also sometimes awake other times too, so <laughs> if you see me online, thank me. Um, yeah, so thank you. Uh, do I have any questions? Was the Matrix UI written? Let's see. Um, so it is, so we're using, it's, it, it's a cursor's interface. We're using Ubuntu UI for some of the decoration. Um, and I do not remember what the underlying, it's, it, it, it's all Python. I don't remember what the underlying library we call is. I'll, I'll you all like it, but. You all get it. Yes, thank you. And it's, uh, it's, it's pretty nice to deal with. Um, I, I, I mean, it's desktop UI stuff, so. <laughs> um, cool, any other questions? Awesome. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's about it. That's a good ending time to give a little break. Um, the next talk uh, is going to be Constantinos. And he's going to talk about, though, ten, you've got 10 minutes, Gustavus. But <laughs> I, 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 I'm just, um, he's going to talk about some of the stuff we are doing in the big software team. So, so originally we had two talks just on big software. Um, the CI system has grown to, I think, warrant a talk of its own. Um, but uh, he'll, he'll talk a little bit about what, we, what we've been doing to warrant such a system as this. Um, and uh, we, we're, we're missing being able to do testing so, in a consistent way. That's it. Thank you. Oh. So, Vivian, you could show us uh, the output of CWI? Yes. Oh, that's right. I was going to do that. Okay. So, um, we actually were just discussing this. Okay. So there's that IP address I was on before, and I believe, yeah, CWR runs on the same machine. If you go to port 5000 on that machine, I would like to, to put this in Jenkins, so it's a little bit more accessible, but, but for now you just drop to the other port and get it. Um, this is CWR. So, um, well, let's start from the top. So there are some number of jobs in CWR. Right now we've only registered one. It's the OpenJDK um, in Kevin Monroe's bundle. Um, Oh, right, I, I, I should kind of highlight. So I've, I'm testing that layer open JDK, but I've said it lives in this bundle, and that's important. Um, the CI system is operational. It's, it's thinking things, uh, things from a big point of view where you're gonna deploy something in a bundle where it does something useful. It, it, it's solving that distributed problem. So you can't just say test this layer. You have to say test this layer in this bundle. Um, so Kevin Monroe has a job at DevN said that that layer, e even the port version I have, runs in it. And we've had two tests. Um, let's see, actually has the, no, no, this one is still finishing. So, so we have the two tests that I ran just to make sure everything was hunky-dory. And we can click into them. And um, I've only set up one cloud, but if I had told it to test on GCE and other things, you'd get a bunch of links for each cloud and a, a green or yellow or red checkbox for each cloud. And you can expand these. And you can see the test that ran. So uh, Charmproof and MakeLint make um, are already 
built in when you build a bundle and, and run the tools that we do against it. Um, so basically, it's a valid charm. Um, the Python looks good from a linter's perspective. Um, and actually, <laughs> it's <laughs> like somebody wrote a deploy test. <laughs> and I, I bet if we looked at it, it would be, um, you know, yes, this deploys and, and gets to the right port. Um, let's see. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's just logging output. Okay. Um, and then it will uh, go ahead and run, let's see, to parse. We should label these a little bit more nicely. Um, it actually runs charm proof each time that builds the bundle, so that there's some kind of extraneous um, charm proofs there. But you see, this one was before a matrix ran. Um, so it runs the tests of the bundle, and it right. also runs all the tests for each, uh, for each charm. Thank you. Fun. Right. Cool. I've been focused on the matrix stuff, so I'm like, all right, it ran matrix. I don't care what else it does. <laughs> um, and, uh, and and again, you can click through here if, if you want logs and get nice. Um, it, this would be more useful for their failure, um, but you'll get nice trace backs and other nice Python things telling you exactly why something failed. Um, cool. Yes? Do you want to show us? the tests as being available as unit tests from Jenkins. Let's see. So we, we should go to Jenkins. Mm -hmm. uh, select a build. Yeah. Pass let's say, go to the port, report port. Yeah. And there are test results, mm -hmm. no failures, uh, to the whole test, yes, for the user. Ah, the root. Oh, nice. Yeah, and okay. then you see for each bundle, you see that. Those yep. Yeah. So you have everything here, and also you see that the the bundle that you are testing, click on the key. Let's see. The bundle that you are testing, the OpenJDK, uh -huh. comes from a local copy. Yes. If you see this, it was as a PMP. So yeah. I, I, I think that's getting, well, yes. So th that's that's so kind of getting more under the hood so I want so to, but yeah. Put the source stuff uh, from, from the yeah. directory. It did the, did it locally. It updated the bundle and then run everything that is in the bundle with the return that is locally put. Right, Wh which actually, that, that's part of the reason why we ran this. Um, we, we wanted, uh, one of the problems you'll run into in, in testing bundles is it's easy to run the testing tools against stuff in the charm store. Um, you often have to tweak um, the bundle YAMLs to run them locally, right? So if, if, if I have this layer um, that's been checked in um, in my version control system, um, but hasn't been promulgated to the store, there are just a few ho hoops to jump through. You go to bundle-local.yaml and you point it at your layer directory or whatever. Um, but this does all that stuff for you um, under the hood. So this that, that's actually uh, something that smooths up, which is why I didn't point it out, but that's okay. <laughs> um, cool. I, I guess, uh, yeah, oh, uh, you know, we could, oh, no, that, that's not going to open nicely, is it? Yeah. Um, here, let's see if I can, J just to show you, wh when you get a failed glitch, um, you can actually, that you have something that you can replicate, that the font's kind of small. Um, but uh, but basically, in this particular glitch, it added two units, it rebooted the unit, it removed the unit, and then it added another unit. Um, and you can actually run matrix with that glitch plan and replicate that. So if you have an interesting case, even if it's a one in a million failure, you can say, please do that again, like 10 more times or whatever. Um, and, uh, and, and you have a replicable case. So you, you could, yeah, that, that's actually, that would be a nice feature to add into the continuous integration system is run with the same glitch that I ran with last time. Um, that's a good idea. Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> Thanks everyone again.